really getting into Japanese horror movies lately. I just watched through this box set called Daie Gothic. It's a collection of three Japanese ghost stories. Now, before this, a long time ago, I had seen Kurineko and House, or sometimes called Houseu. Uh, that's a really crazy Japanese haunted house film. But more recently, I saw Kwaiden and I saw Onibaba. So I've been getting deeper into this, particularly these old period piece Japanese films, mostly ghost stories. So I was very happy that Radiance, the company who put this out, sent this to me for review. So let's talk about it. Hello, my friends. Welcome again to the Cobweb channel. My name is Daniel and it is November. It's my first video of November. And I got to be honest with you. I went really hard on Halloween and spooky season in the month of October, put out a lot of videos, watched a lot of horror movies, uh, went to a lot of like Halloween events. I Halloweened it hard. And at the end, I was tired. I have been tired at the beginning of November. And the chance to spend that time going through this box set of very classic, atmospheric, spooky, and short little Japanese ghost stories was just perfect. It was absolutely perfect. It was just what I needed. So let's go through each movie specifically. I'm going to talk about what they're about, what I think of them, if I recommend them or not, and you'll get an idea if this box set is for you. So the first film is called The Ghost of Yatsuya, and it is from 1959. This is a bright, color ghost film that takes place in feudal Japan, as all of these are. And it's about a samurai who's named, at first I thought his name was Lemon, because when you see the subtitles, it looks like it says Lemon. But I looked into it a little more and I found what I thought was a lowercase L is actually an uppercase I, and his name is Ayman. So, Ayman is a samurai, but a poor one. He married into a pretty poor family, and he's just bummed out about his low station in life, and he's being kind of neglected of his very sweet and doting wife, but he suddenly gets the chance at a possibility of a position, or we might say a really good job, when he meets a beautiful young rich girl and it seems she wants him for herself. Now, The Ghost of Yatsuya is apparently based on one of the most famous Japanese ghost stories ever. It's actually based on a play that has been made into movies over and over and over again. Actually first adapted for film in 1912. Yes, there's many adaptations, and this actually isn't even the only adaptation from 1959, so it makes it very confusing if you're trying to look this movie up. The other one is directed by Nabu Nakagawa. I'm gonna do my best with Japanese pronunciation in this video, so bear with me. This one is directed by, I'm reading it right now, Kenji uh, Misumi, Kenji Misumi. It seems like from looking into it, the other one is actually the more respected version, the one that most people agree is the best. Not this one, but this is the one in the box said, so it's the one I've seen. I was kind of curious what the differences were, and actually read the synopsis for the other version, and it is very different. Like, I read that synopsis, and I'm like, that is not what I read. The main difference is the main guy, Ayman, in that version, I think in the play as well, is very much a bad guy. He is one of the victimizers of his wife. Whereas in this one, he's one of the victims. Like, he makes a couple of bad decisions. He's not the best husband, but he's certainly not the monster that it seems like he is in that other version. So very, very interesting. They had a very different take on the main character here. Now, the ultimate point of this very classic ghost story is it is about the ghost of a very wronged wife coming back to take revenge on her husband. Now, like I said, in this one, not so much on the husband, but rather the conspirators that uh, consp are conspiring to ruin their marriage, get rid of her so he can marry this other girl, this very rich girl. Now, for much of the runtime of this movie, it really just plays like a melodrama. I was actually sitting there like, okay, where where is this going? Like, is this going to become a horror movie at some point? Because it just didn't seem like there was any hints of horror at all for a long time. But once we get into the third act and the ghostly stuff starts to come out... It is very, very satisfying. Now, as I was watching the movie, it actually reminded me of the first segment in Kwaiden, uh, that very famous Japanese uh, horror anthology from 1964 called The Black Hair, which has a very similar premise. I, I don't think that segment is directly based on this, but I think it is influenced by that classic story, as I think a lot of things in Japan were, because it was just a story that was told over and over. Uh, but I think the ghost stuff is actually more satisfying in this movie than in 
in the black hair from Quiden. Um, I mean, this movie goes all out. I mean, they try to make the ghost look horrific. They're going nuts with all of the special effects that are going on and the things this ghost is doing with the action, with the sword play that's going on. It's actually really, really cool. So I was a big fan of the third act here and the first two acts are pretty good. Like I said, I doubted a little bit whether this was gonna go somewhere truly awesome, but uh, it gets there, it gets there and I, I quite enjoy the ghost of Yatsuya and I'm interested in seeing that other version now, that very different take that it seems like a lot of people like better. Now in this box set, all of them come with reversible cover art, which is really, really cool. Yeah, I really like that. I'm gonna go ahead and flip them around. So what connects these movies in this box set called Daie Gothic is that they are all from the same studio, Daie. With this box set, you're kind of getting a little crash course in this studio. There's actually a booklet that I might be referencing more in the video, a really good booklet. Uh, it's got some really good writings about the studio, how it came about. It was a little bit of a merger of some, a few different studios around this time period. Very cool image there. We'll talk about the movie that that is from very, very soon. So the next movie is called The Snow Woman from 1968. Directed by Tokuzo Tanaka, this is based on folklore and more specifically on a particular story found in Quaiden, Stories and Studies of Strange Things, which is the book that was the basis of Quaiden, which I was just talking about. And if you've seen Quaiden, you probably saw the title of this, The Snow Woman. Is that like the Snow Woman segment in Quaiden? And yes, it is, exactly. So this is another adaptation of that story uh, just a few years after that, and uh, but making it feature length, 80 minutes, so not super long, but still feature length. So it tells the story of a young man who is a sculptor who is out with his master, or he is the apprentice, trying to find the perfect wood for a sculpture of a Buddhist statue because that's what they do, that is their trade. And when they find it, they stay the night way out in the snow in the forest and the snow woman comes about. There's actually this really good narration at the very beginning of the story uh, of the movie talking about how the story of the snow woman is very well known in this region of Japan and there is no one who doesn't believe in her. That's something about these, these movies that I really like. The fact that the existence of ghosts and spirits is just common knowledge and everybody believes in it. Um, this booklet that I was just ta talking about references that, that in Japanese culture, particularly in this time period, the line between the living and the dead is very thin and, and sometimes just non-existent. Like the existence of ghosts and spirits is just, it's, it's common knowledge. Like everybody knows about ghosts. It's not like in American movies where you have to take some time for people to build up like, oh wow, I, I guess there maybe is a ghost after denying it for 30 minutes. Not in these movies. So the snow woman is this elemental spirit that everyone fears. The very essence of winter forming into a humanoid person who drains the life force of men. It's a really, really cool story. And it was dealt with just amazingly in Quiet, and that's my favorite story in that. It's also the basis for the third story in Tales from the Dark Side, which is probably my favorite horror anthology of all time. So I love this story. But can it stretch out to feature length? This story of how the snow woman kills this guy, but then tells the other guy, the young man, that if you tell anyone of my existence, I will kill you. He goes through his life. Will he talk about her? Will he not? You probably know the story. Does it stretch out well into feature length? The answer is absolutely, absolutely. I love this movie. I can't even tell you how much I loved it. Um, this is the standout of the box set for me. And I gotta say, I like this better than the adaptation in Quiet Un. I honestly do. Like, I love stretching out to feature length, giving it so much room to breathe, spending more time with these characters, really getting, getting invested in the central romance of it between this young man and a beautiful, like, jaw-droppingly beautiful woman that he meets and they fall in love and form this marriage. She creates, like, a paradise of a life for him and you just get to care about them so much. However, another thing I really liked about this version is while... The end is very much a reveal in Quiet End and in Tales from the Dark Side. Just in case you haven't seen those, I won't say it, but I'm guessing you've probably seen those. Um, it's a reveal in those. This assumes you've already seen Quiet End, which I think was smart because this came out four years after that. And that was a very big movie. It won an Oscar. And uh, this assumes you've already seen that. So it doesn't play coy with the ending. It doesn't play coy with who is who. Um, you kind of, you know that from the start. And it's very much just telling that story while spending just getting to know the characters so much better. There's more conflict that's thrown into it where the man is having to deal with these bullies in town, these powerful people that are trying to tear him down. And she's just trying to help her husband. 
It's a beautiful story and it is haunting. That's like the best word I can use to describe this film. It is haunting in visuals, in story, in, in character. Like it is just, it's, it's incredible. Like I thought the ghostly effects and the visuals were incredible. I thought the, the lead actress in this was amazing. And the look of the snow woman with the just completely pale skin, the absolutely glowing golden eyes. You don't see a lot of monsters and stuff in movies with gold eyes, just piercing gold. And that's what you get here. And it's, it's just awesome. So I love this movie so much. If you've seen Quietin, if you love it, if you think that story can never be done better and it can't be stretched out to feature length, like I implore you to uh, check this out anyway. I think it's amazing. Let's go ahead and check out the reversible cover art. That's very, very cool. And plus, like, I just loved watching a snowy atmosphere movie right now. You know, it's November. It's still very much fall. And, uh, but we all know that, like, the snowy wintry season is right around the corner if you live in a, a part of the world where that's the case. Uh, but for me, certainly, like, you know winter is coming. You're in stores, you see Christmas decorations, you see depictions of snow and snowmen. The anticipation of that season is building. So I just love just, just getting curled up and watching this very snowy, very atmospheric, very haunting ghost story. Absolutely fantastic. So the next film has an awesome title. It is The Bride from Hades. Also goes by the title, The Peony Lantern. Definitely less cool. This is directed by Satsuya Yamamoto. And this is about a young man from a wealthy samurai family who is getting forced into a marriage that he absolutely doesn't want. And his family wants him to be something he's not. All he wants to do is live a simple life and teach the children of poor people how to read and write. He wants to better the world through education. So he's just a really good guy, but he's not like a, you know, laying it on too thick, like sickeningly perfect guy, like a Hallmark leading man or something like that. Like he's very likable and uh, he feels very real, even though he's just an incredibly good, good person. So as he's trying to avoid this arranged marriage, he runs into a beautiful young woman and her handmaiden, her servant, however you want to say it. And he helps them out with something and they just really want to thank him. He quickly falls in love with the beautiful young woman and her with him. She very much takes an interest in him, but it is possible that she is not quite of this world and she is a bride from Hades. So I really like that all of these stories, they're all classic ghost stories based on things, but different kind of things. You know, you've got um, the ghost of Yatsuya, which is based on a play. The Snow Woman, which is based on folklore in general, but also a short story based on that folklore. And this one is just based on a short story. And actually, I keep referencing this booklet because it's fantastic. It's got a lot of great stuff in here. Like it does have essays about the studio Daie, about Japanese ghost stories in general. Uh, it's actually got reviews of all of the movies from that time period. They didn't get like people to come in and just write from a cut modern perspective reviews. Like it's actually got reviews that people wrote back in the fifties and sixties when these came out, which is cool. But also it has got the story of the snow woman from uh Quiden, And it actually has the full text of the story. The bride from Hades is based on too. So that's a really, really cool resource. This is a very good ghost story. It's a very romantic ghost story. It seems very similar to the Chinese ghost story, which is the, an eighties Hong Kong horror film that I actually just saw recently. It's a classic Hong Kong horror film. And actually funny, there's a moment where somebody's telling another character like, what's going on? What's happening with this guy and this girl? And he says like, oh, I've read stuff like that in like Chinese books, but that kind of thing just happened in real life. So I felt like that was kind of Maybe a, maybe a nod to that Chinese story. Oh, by the way, the actor that said that line is Takashi Shimura, who is the only actor that, as a Japanese film novice, uh, in all these films that I personally recognize, he's in a lot of Kurosawa films like uh, Seven Samurai. I, I recognize him from the most, but I've seen him in several Kurosawa films. So that's very cool that he's in this movie. And this film really delivers as a ghost story. In fact, I would say of all of these movies, though it's not my favorite, The Snow Woman is, I would say this one delivers the most as a ghost ghost film. The ghost stuff in this movie, one, there's a lot of it. So you don't have to wait till the third act like the ghost of Yatsuya. There's a lot of ghostly happenings in this movie. And it is visually just awesome. I mean, the ghosts are so creepy, so creepy in this, like particularly the woman who plays uh, the beautiful woman's handmaiden. I mean, her voice 
was is chilling. Like she has such a creepy voice. That's the kind of thing you would lose if you watch this movie dubbed. I don't know if it's even available dubbed, but it's a good argument for not dubbing uh, movies unless it's like a Argento or, or Fulci film because I I like those dubbed. That's fun. But it's a good argument for not dubbing foreign films because you would lose that voice. And her voice is incredible, absolutely chilling. There's floating and flying and very simple makeup used very effectively. And one of the hallmarks of this classic story is not just uh, falling in love with the dead but doing other things with the dead. And this movie goes all the way with that. So I thought this was a fantastic ghost story. Now, the one drawback for the movie for me is it's, it spends a surprising amount of time with a comedy relief character. I say comedy relief because I could objectively tell he was comedy relief. I didn't find him very funny uh, personally. Also, his wife is in this too. And there's a lot of time spent with them. So the movie is very totally inconsistent. It's got very dark and scary stuff. It's got goofy, funny stuff, at least supposed to be funny stuff. You, you, you can decide for yourself whether you think it's funny. It's the only movie like that. Uh, the other two are much more tonally consistent films than, than this one. But I'd recommend this because the ghost stuff is so fantastic. So let's go ahead and check out the reversible cover art. This is another one that really benefits from uh, just that cultural aspect of everybody believes in ghosts because uh, there's a lot of cool stuff with like the town just kind of coming together to try to help this ghost situation. And that's just the kind of thing you won't really get in an American movie pretty much ever. So really, really cool imagery. This is not one that's in color. All of these films are in breathtaking color. Most of them are filmed entirely on sets, except for maybe this one, I'm not sure. But these two, definitely, they're very set-based, beautiful sets. These were just what I needed after an exhausting October. Uh, I just really settled down into these classic films and I thought they were great. That's my review of Daya Gothic from Radiance. Thank you so much to them for sending this to me. I just really loved it. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments. What did you think about this? Did you buy it? Are you planning on getting it? Sound off. And if you want to spend even more time with me, you can click the video on the screen. Thank you so much. I will see you next time.